Welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today we have Mr. Josh Hillman joining us today, as usual. Mr. Josh, how you doing? Doing well. How about yourself? Doing well. And our special guest is Mr. John Ryler. He is the, I guess, president and CEO of Maker 13, or is that a good enough title for you? That's, that's a good enough title. We uh, changes based on who's asking and what day it is, so it's all good. Jack of all trades, master of all trades as well. Typically that goes with a master of none, but John is the master of all trades here. Well, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So, um, Maker 13. So if you don't mind, uh, A, tell us a little bit about yourself, John, and then tell us a little bit about Maker 13. One of the reasons we came over here is because you guys can do all kinds of cool things for people that probably have some bourbon related things that they're looking to do. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to sit down and talk with you. Sure. So Maker Maker 13 is a, it's a community workshop. It's a place where anybody can come off the street and we will teach you how to use equipment to make whatever you want. Uh, myself, I'm a mechanical engineer from over at UofL. Um, I work for a place called Samtech in New Albany. Been there for going on 19 years as a mechanical engineer. And uh, through that time, we uh, had people ask, you know, about different equipment, about different tools and how to use them. And so to kind of give back to the community, um, we kicked off a mobile version of this. And so we would take a trailer full of equipment uh, out to schools. It's called the Maker Mobile. And we would travel around and just really expose the community and kids, uh, anybody, kids of all ages, to how to use equipment and advanced equipment from lasers and 3D printers and how to make things. And so we took that and created uh, the Maker Space, or Maker 13 is a physical space here in Jeffersonville, Indiana, that you can come to and, and bring your own equipment, bring your own tools, or I'm sorry, bring your own materials and uh, just build build what you like. Not to be confused with Maker's Mark, which on a bourbon podcast people might be talking about. That's true. Yeah, we have people come in all the time looking for a, for, for a drink or a sample. And um, when we have uh, heavy equipment, power tools and things, we try not to mix those too often. Yeah, too often. That, that means that there's some room for <laughs> finagling there, possibly. Yeah. So, so, Scott, you didn't really give the intro here, but we're at Maker 13 in downtown Jeffersonville. Yes. Which is about three blocks away from That's My Dog, which is where we were maybe a month ago at this point. Absolutely. Probably about that. And not that far from the walking bridge. So, it, it honestly could be a very walkable commute. Like, if you wanted to come over, kind of check out the place. You could probably come across the big four bridge, walk over down to Maker 13 and, and have a, a decent little walk back. So it's real close proximity. I just wanted to bring that up as we do our tour here of downtown Jeffersonville, you know, my hometown and the place I love to, to be here and represent. So come on down some point in time, go to That's My Dog, grab an awesome uh, what did we get the other day when we were there we both got the chili cheese dog i think it's called the boss hog the boss lady boss lady yeah so we both went and got the boss lady and then now we're just three or four blocks away from it so i would encourage people to go to that's my dog and then come down to maker 13 and check the place out yeah we're right in the middle of uh it's it's the uh they call it the noco art district uh and it's a walking thing from the, the big four bridge just uptown just a little bit uh, there is interactive things. Uh, they're putting in a story walk where uh, local artists and, and students are, are writing stories and they're making it interactive. And just north of us, uh, they're putting in, uh, you know, an event stage, uh, pop-up restaurants, pop-up artists and cubes and things like that coming in the fall of 2020. And uh, just some really neat stuff and very interactive up and down the road. So if you're able to get up here, definitely take a walk. Not to mention the cool stuff the kids can do. There's a vintage fire museum right across the street and a few Mm -hmm. other things that are just right here close by. So it gives you a lot of opportunity to do a lot of fun things all right here in this little sector of uh, downtown Jeff. All right across from that really crazy painted fire tank or uh, water tank. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the pinnacle, kind of focal point for the art district. And uh, yeah, if you haven't driven by and seen that at a minimum, come come check that out. So John, how long has Maker 13 been here? So we're going into our third year um, where we started with a mobile unit uh, back in 2014. And then we built a physical space back in uh, 2016, late 2016. So we're just over three years old right now. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the crazy things that you've seen or maybe created yourself here at Maker 13? Yeah, I mean, it's it's any artist, creative, engineer, entrepreneur. Um, we've seen everything from, uh, you know, medical devices developed, 3D printed and prototyped here to people bringing in, you know, old bourbon barrels, breaking them down, making furniture, uh, custom art, you know, housewarming gifts. Realtors come in and make, you know, sell a house. 
make a housewarming gift with your name on it and personalize it to the region. So having that bourbon barrel and having, you know, that, that part of the, the history and the region uh, just puts that special touch on a lot of things. So for folks that maybe aren't super hands-on or maybe they don't know how to do things, are, are there people here at, you know, Maker 13 that can maybe help walk through a project with someone? Yeah. I mean, every time, any, anytime somebody comes into the shop, we, we team them up for a class. You know, we, we have to teach uh, safety and, and usage classes on the equipment. So if you've never touched a 3D printer, you sit down one-on-one now with uh, kind of some restrictions on training, but we sit down one-on-one with one of our staff or a, a contractor or somebody from the outside uh, who's a professional. Somebody that's done this their entire life will come in and spend time with you one-on-one to learn the equipment for, for safety aspects insurance likes that as well Uh, but we want you in here feeling comfortable with the equipment and then we have staff on hand so during open hours there's always a staff person here to help out uh, answer general questions but one of the neat things is really the community uh, the members helping each other out talking and and solving problems together so somebody might be making something bourbon related and somebody might be making something textile or, or sewing related when those two people start talking and kind of collaborating it's it's a really neat thing so, I mean, it's a really cool place for somebody that's trying to do a business startup, whether it be marketing, whether it's uh, an engineering firm and they want to come in and they want to create logoed items, whether those logoed items are a polo shirt or uh, cup holders or uh, a Glen Cairn today with their logo on it. So I, I make reference now to the Glen Cairn because before we got started with the podcast today, John helped us take a couple of Glen Cairns and uh, put the bourbon barrel talk logo on them. So one we checked out and we're, you know, it needed a little adjustment, but the second one looks just dead on what we wanted. So. No, absolutely. It, it, you know, it's, it's funny how you, sometimes it's trial and error in a place like this, but it, it, it's nice because you can come in and do those type of things and it doesn't cost you a lot of money or a lot of time. It's just something that teaches you to work with creativity and be able to focus and work through those issues. Yeah. And we, we are launching a new membership style, um, with the different, uh, you know, restrictions on people traveling and working and things, uh, we created kind of more of a punch card. So you buy a monthly punch card and it can start at $30 a month up to a hundred dollars a month, depending on how many hours you want. And you come in and use those hours on the equipment. It's your discretion. Uh, everything is scheduled online. So there's an app, you pull up the equipment on the app that you're trained on and say, hey, I want to use that laser for two hours on Tuesday. Staff will have it ready for you. You come in, and again, at your discretion and leisure, and, and you make what you want. Uh, some people bring in spares and, you know, play and experiment and trial, trial and error, um, but then people start taking orders. And so they're paying for their membership by selling stuff that they make here, and uh, we're just excited to have them here to do that. So Maker 13 has full businesses that are basically run out of here. This may not be their their inventory place or warehouse, but they're doing 75, 80% of their production here on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got members that uh, you almost see them every day we're open or every couple of days that we're open. Um, and it is, yeah, they, they run Etsy shops. They run, uh, they, they stock the, the local boutiques or they have a full front storefront around town. So uh, anything and everything goes. So what are some of the neatest things you've seen made here at Maker 13? Uh, some of the neat ones, uh, we had a gentleman who completely designed his own, uh, mobile, uh, uh, photographic van and he did it on the CNC router. So take a sheet of plywood. He, he ran through a few sheets of plywood, but he created a tiny home inside a van that turned everything upside down and had a mobile dark room. And so he would travel around and he's somewhere out in the West, uh, taking pictures right now, but, uh, he, he, he travels, he goes to sites, takes pictures and everything he done, he, he did was, was machined out on the machines here, built it here and then, then took off. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have people that, uh, yeah, we've got a, a local guy that does upholstery. And so he will use the lasers to cut out the fabrics and pieces that he needs take them over to the embroidery machine, custom, you know, embroidery, the, the name or the style or the car on it. And then he hand stitches that together and uses some of our sewing machines for that. And so he's making interiors of vehicles. And then he's also making uh, lighting effects that he laser cuts out and, and puts in. So, um, it, it's all over the place. Hmm. So, uh, one of the neat things that I know has happened and we haven't talked about yet, and Scott may not be aware of, during you know here we are we're about five months into the pandemic i think the the rona as i'll call it 
five months in and the shop shut down for a little while from a membership perspective, just while the whole state of Indiana was shut down. Mm -hmm. But during that time, you used it to do something that was very unique and very beneficial to our community. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So there was a call, national call makers, anybody that can make things to help the healthcare workers to, to do it. And so, like you said, we shut down, members could not come in here. So it was, what do we do with all this equipment that's just, just sitting uh, so we kind of listened to the calls. We talked to the community. We talked to uh, other makers and, and, and community people that uh, said, what do you need? Um, and, you know, the N95 masks were huge. The face shields were huge. And any type of PPE that people could get, get a hold of, they did. And so we worked with them, uh, found a design that all makers could create and that they were creating. And we wanted to do it faster and, and better. So we ended up making face shields. And uh, we started on the 3D printers where we 3D printed the headbands and then laser cut out the shields and put them all together. And then you had this, you know, mobile sneeze guard, you know, face shield that, that uh, could add to your PPE and, and really uh, lengthen your face mask and, and lengthen all the rest of the stuff, give you that extra layer of protection. So with the 3D printers, we could print one every three to four hours. And we had all four or five printers going at one time and, and we're kind of working with UofL. Uh, their additive manufacturing was also collecting things from makers. And so we took all that and said, well, how do we, you know, one every three to four hours is, is not enough. And so we took those and, and modified the designs and we actually went into a full kind of injection mold uh, working with some of our suppliers. And we went from, you know, supplying a dozen, two dozen a day to 2,500 a day. Wow, um, 2,500, really? Yeah, and so when you get, it's that balance of prototyping and, and using the prototypes to, to get to that next level. We are able to turn on that next level with some of our industry partners. Uh, you know, there's a mold shop out past uh, Cordon, Indiana. It's called Jones Machine and Tool. Yeah, I know Jones, Danny and, and them. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so they're suppliers. Uh, again, my day job at, at Sam Tech, you know, so had good conversations with them and said, hey, w what do you guys need and how quick can we do this? And so they, they looked at the design since we had already 3D printed and prototyped everything that they had questions about. We sent them that one file and in about three and a half, four days, they had machined a mold to go from that three hour cycle down to 20 seconds. And then we took the, uh, the shield and uh, instead of laser cutting it, it's pretty quick, but manual still changing out. And we worked with the guys up in Sellersburg, um, Owings Patterns and said, hey, we need material. And they said, hey, I think we can do one better. If we put this in a roll die and stamp these things out, we could do them for you know a fraction of the cost and, and make you 10000 a day. And so uh, you know they, they created the die within two days. Jones Machine and Tool had the mold within a weekend. And uh, within about three to five days, we had full-on production doing that 2500 a day. Uh, so collectively over that time, and we're still making them now as schools start back up and, and even making them, modifying them for, for kids if they need to wear them. Uh, but we've, we've sent out probably uh, 40,000 of them for free uh, to healthcare workers. We, you know, uh, Sam Tech said, hey, we can, we can help provide material and provide some of the stock, stock uh, material. And then we had the community foundation. They also chipped in. And so we were able to turn those around and, and use the community workshop to produce something to get back into the community is, you know, within a week or two. Well, that's just unbelievable. That's awesome. Uh, I knew that you all were making them, but I had no idea that you all were making them at that fast of a clip. I mm -hmm. guess that would be the and, best way to put it. And they not, not only got shipped all across Indiana and Kentucky, but they went across the United States at some point. Oh yeah. And, and at that point, you know, we were collectively working again with UofL and, and they're added to manufacturing. They were having people still bring in the 3d printed versions. And then we were feeding in the molded and stamped out versions. And, and then even the UPS foundation was saying, Hey, we'll, we'll ship them. And so they started helping us get outside of just the, tri uh, you know, b both Indiana and Kentucky. Uh, they helped us get, you know, we were down in the Carolinas and out, out West. And so we were shipping these things all over the place. We wanted to make sure we took care of regional first, you know, people that could drive here to get them, they came and got them. And then we shipped out kind of in parallel to keep, keep feeding the community. I mean, you, we've been in schools, in, uh, hospitals, in dentist office, doctor's office, all of the health departments and everybody else. They've all, they've been all around Southern Indiana and Louisville. Oh yeah. And they're still in use now. We're, uh, even after two or three months of it, uh, we're starting to get people getting uh, replacement of the shields. 
just because they have to clean them, you know, after every patient, after every day, you know, they're starting to wear down the shields, but everything else is reusable. So you pop the old shield off, put the new one on and you keep going. And so you can do that every patient, every minute, every, you know, whatever you need. So we wanted to make sure they were as as reusable and, and universal as possible, so, which is why we, you know, we watched what, what other makers were doing to make them to where, you know, what they 3D printed, they could use our shields. And, you know, we can then just trade out stuff from as needed. Very cool. Just the, the vast uh, and quick ability to take something and to come up with the idea and to turn it around and instantly impact the community all at that first peak that we saw back in, I want to say it was in April, if I remember right, but having all that in place by the first peak and here we are in the second peak and the demand is probably just as strong as it was, but very cool. You just think about um, somebody's ability to come in here and to design something, to try it out on the 3D printer and then to make it go into production. I mean, that's what this is about is having a, a young entrepreneur have the capabilities to see that, to try it. Just as we talked about on the Glen Cairn, you, you laser etch something the first time and maybe it's not exactly as you want. And then you do it the second time and it's better. And then the third and fourth trial and error. And I'm sure that's what happened with these face shields as they were, you were molding and 3d printing those, those forehead pieces that held everything on. So very cool idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I tell you, um, it's really, really neat when you can come into a space like this and you can work with not, not to mention you're a nonprofit, right? So, I mean, you're not doing this for profit. You're, you're out helping the community and and it's out of the kindness of your all's heart, you know, being, you know, a nonprofit. And obviously you have great partners within the community that, have, that will help you to pull this together. But it, it means a lot that when you have somebody that is willing just as much to help that uh, ask for help in some capacity, you know, through donations or whatever and whatnot. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit more about the membership, how it kind of drives. You know, it, you can even get into dollars and cents if you want to, like a, a 30-hour membership costs this much and that type of thing. So that way for folks that may be interested, they can – you know, already have kind of a good idea of what they're able to do and, and what the expense is for that. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the I say the new structure that we, we launched here uh, coming into August. Uh, so $30 a month will get you 10 hours. And uh, so that's either, you know, 10 laser hours or 10 embroidery hours or 10 machine hours. Uh, it's your, again, it's your discretion, at, at what you feel comfortable with and what you're trained on. And then the next step uh, is, is $50 is, is 25, 25 hours. And then $100 is 50 hours. And uh, so we kind of took, uh, you know, what is the general usage? How much can people get in here? And tried to make it reasonable to where, you know, again, it's kind of that punch card kind of thing. And if you use all your hours, and that's that's three dollars a machine hour. And so to use a laser that costs anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand dollars for three dollars an hour, um, that's kind of what the punch card kind of turns into. And then if you use that up, you can always purchase more more hours. Um, just to, just to put that in perspective, John, the, the Glen Cairn that you etched took all of about 20 seconds once it was on the machine. Yeah. Yeah. So set up, I mean, we, we kind of fiddled around with the, the design a little bit or just kind of scaled it, um, to fit it on there. So we spent maybe five, 10 minutes kind of setting the machine and then a 20, 30 second, you know, actual laser time and then change out time. So, I mean, you could make, you know, potentially 50 to a hundred custom glasses, you know, every hour, two hours, and, right. you know, you can charge, uh, it depends what, you know, what you're making and you know, material costs. But well, I bring that up because I know Scott and I are both aware that the Louisville bourbon hounds and the Louisville bourbon clubs, they all put out, they're selling, you know, Glen Cairns with their logos on them and just somebody's ability to come take a class, learn how to use the lasers and then to come in here and produce something that they want for an event or something for a group of friends, just as kind of their group, their logo. Pretty neat to be able to do that so quickly. Not only that, you know, you got best men's gifts is kind of what I think. You know, when I think of bourbon, you know, I always think, of, you know, hey, my guy's got a bottle of bourbon and I got him a set of rocks glasses because that was more popular at that time because, you know, I'm old as hell. So, um, but <laughs> I haven't been in a wedding for 10 years, so I really stopped thinking about best men's <laughs> gifts like 10 years ago, but yeah, I get you, but you know, but so that's the thing. So for a lot of those people, that would be something that Glen Karen would be etched with, you know, Stacy and Joe's, you know, initials maybe, or, you know, whatever that might be, but it, it's just a super cool idea or something that you could come in and really, really take advantage of it. And it would be, you know, 
inexpensive, but very thoughtful and a very nice gift overall. So John, what if somebody just wants to come in and try it out? Do you have any kind of program right now for a, a one month or? We do. So with, with your very first class, you automatically get five hours. And so that's where if somebody's on the fence of, well, do I want my own equipment? Do I want to do this? You know, with that very first class, you, you get five hours to come in and, and try it out. And then if you want the membership, great. If not, you know, no big deal. Um, so earlier today, we had somebody who, who had actually bought a piece of equipment that didn't know how to run what they bought. And so we sat down with them, kind of coached them along how we use our equipment and how to kind of get started. And then he's going to come back in and kind of compare notes and, and, and look at that. So, um, yeah, in the classes, we tried to make them pretty reasonable. So for intro classes, for your basic 3D printing or laser class, 20 bucks. And that's a two-hour class typically, and you make something during that time. We want to see you use the equipment and feel comfortable with it. And so for about 20 bucks, you, you, you come in, uh, and now it's a one-on-one -on -one class. And, um, you know, you build either part of our, our curriculum or you bring in your project that you want to learn about, and we'll tailor the class to that. You know, as you get into the more advanced equipment, it's $30 for the class. So the CNC class and the embroidery class and some that takes a little bit more, uh, a little bit more time. Uh, is thirty dollars, and then I think the the highest one we have is right at fifty dollars for like the welding, and so a one on one welding class with with an expert welder in the region, and you know all the materials are provided for that. You know we've seen more families have come in and do, done that to where you know maybe a kid doesn't know what they want to build, come in with them. You know come in with your parent. You two take the class for you know fifty bucks or you know un, under that, and. Um, and see if that's something you want to do. So it's a great trial and like that intro, uh, five free hours, come in, work on it and, uh, and see if you want to do the membership or not. Heck, that's a cheap way to learn. If you want to think you might want to do something for a living, I mean, welding, I mean, just, just that amount, you know, somebody to teach you and get in there and kind of, you know, mess with the arc and, you know, all those type of things that, that would be a very inexpensive way just to learn if, Hey, is this something I think I might want to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we're connected with the, the schools and the trade schools and, and we're happy to, to introduce you to those guys. So if you want to take it to that next level, they are guys that are happy to happy to have you and happy to learn from you. And most of these guys for, especially around the trade stuff, they'll pay for the rest of your education. So, I mean, it's, it's a great way to get involved. So I'm a member here, Scott. I hadn't told, I don't know if you may be aware of that or I, not, but I think I knew that, but the, uh, some of the coolest things I have done here or have used are the CNC router. If you haven't seen the CNC router work and just the, the sheer magnitude of its precision, you know, depending on the router you put in it, but the router bit, it can do some crazy things so that I've gotten into doing boxes and woodworking and, you know, figuring out all the different kind of wood variations you can use and integrate them into some neat design. But I've also done some cool things. I took a bandsaw box class here maybe a year and a half ago. Coolest little thing. I made a jewelry box for my daughter. Uh, I think we used two by sixes to put together. And then, you know, you glue them together. They make some crazy designs. So hers have got some really weird colors and things on it too. But now it sits on her dresser. Uh, got like four little drawers that pull out. Everything was done with a bandsaw. Pretty neat class. But the lasers... I would say the lasers are the most used here. Would you agree, John? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the top ones, and there's three different lasers, so different sizes. I mean, you can fit you know, a whole, whole bourbon barrel head in one to a bottle in another to uh, different sizes. So different, different levels and different sizes for the material that you bring in. Uh, second is probably the embroidery machine, followed by the CNC router. That's probably the top three equipment sets so does the laser react different if you got a bottle full of bourbon if you're etching somebody's name on it do you know it, it not a, not a difference at all so it's it's just uh etching the surface kind of just sputtering the glass on the top so it kind of frosts it um so it did make us a, nervous you know first flat bottle a nice woodford bottle big flat back you can put all kinds of designs on the back of that and um gosh we were we, we weren't sure if we were more scared to lose the bottle of bourbon or the laser <laughs> uh, but again, it, you know, as long as you don't bring it from, from ice cold outside and throw it in the laser, it's going to be fine. So, Is that something you learned from experience, the ice cold into the, for inside? glasses, glasses? Yes. Uh, not full bottles of bourbon. I think the bottles will diffuse the heat, but, uh, yeah, we had people bring in glasses from wintertime, you know, sat in their car all day and then they throw it in the laser and shoot it. Well, it's going to heat up and crack. So, <laughs> <laughs> 
I can only imagine what that sounds like. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So I, I'm assuming that, you know, as the, the properties develop around here with the depot, I think it is going right next to us, mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, you're going to start to see more and more events where people can come in, check it out while they're downtown having a beer or a bourbon or after they've walked over here from that's my dog or something like that. So hopefully there will be a whole lot more opportunities for people to come in. But can they come in any day of the week right now? We we like to have an appointment. I mean, when the staff's here, they'll they'll be happy to talk to you right now. I mean, face masks are required, and and uh, but we can we can show you around. Uh, right now, our hours are a little bit limited, but we are open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, Monday and, and Wednesday are eight a.m. Uh, to eight p.m. We do have a break for cleaning in the middle of the day from two to four. Um, and then Friday and Saturday are noon to 8 p.m. And as equipment gets used and as we kind of watch how people use it, we're, we're looking to expand those hours back to kind of what normal used to be. Pre-Rona. Pre-Rona, yeah. And, uh, and, but it's, it's based on what, what the members are asking for and what they need. So we're going to try to monitor that and, and watch that. Um, but in between time, we're talking about, you know, are there kits, things that you can kind of take and make uh, to where you come in and whether it's a kid's thing or an adult's thing. Uh, come in and get a sample and take it home with you and just build it at home. Yeah. So John and I did a Rube Goldberg with a number of other local engineers here at some of the elementary schools. We should do an adult Rube Goldberg. Yeah. It, it would almost remind me of, uh, I've seen like the Red Bull competitions where the flying machines and the downhill soapbox, if you made one to pour a glass of bourbon, Ooh. you got to have 10 steps. He just hit it. And uh, I'm going to get it. How, how do you do it? And, uh, that's a balance of like a, a back to the future type of a machine that he, you know, gets his breakfast ready for or something or whatever we do. Don't set it to 2020. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. 2020 has been not very much fun. We can just say that for sure. I like that idea though, John, a, a Rube Goldberg that pours a glass of bourbon or a shot of bourbon after about 10 crazy steps, you know, where the basketball bounces off the wall hits the catapult catapult drops a melon melon gets smashed sledgehammer does something else yeah yeah i'm gonna let you figure that one out you're obviously the brains of this podcast (laughs) we're gonna make it happen (laughs) yeah and i and i'm hoping uh in the past you know we used to have date nights where we'd have a local distillery or local winery come and do a sampling and while you were doing that sampling you'd go over and laser at your personal glass and so we had rocks glasses or, or, or wine glasses or whatever it was. And, and, you know, you make your design. And depending on which line you're in, if you were at the front end of the line, designs were pretty conservative. <laughs> but if you were at the tail end after having four or five samples, whatever you bring up, we'll laser on. It takes, you know, a minute to put it together, and, and we had a good time. So you partnered with another one of the uh, previous uh, Bourbon Barrel Talk podcast interviewees. Uh, oh, R- Donum Day Rick. I Donum assume. Day and Richard Ote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been a really good partner here with you, haven't they? They have. And, and uh, you know, it, it started when we started this with, with Rick and them. Is, uh, you know, they needed some pieces for their equipment. How did they diffuse the, the liquids as it was going into the batches and things? And we actually 3D printed some diffusers that they bolted on to some of their equipment. And then once they did that, I mean, he's a, he's a great mind to think of ways to, to, to change the flow of things and make his process more efficient. Uh, but even through that, you know, they would laser etch all their glasses and their coasters and, and their, their stuff that they would sell. And so they were able to, to get it at cost, do the work themselves, and then sell it in their, you know, for their gift baskets and for, you know, they're at their, at their place. I think their beer taps are also 3D printed, if I remember right. Yeah, they, some, they, some of them were. Um, yeah, where they went straight, yeah, 3D printed. Well, it's, the, it's the little logo on top of the beer tap, yeah. I should say. They've, they've 3D printed whatever their... I can't recall exactly what their logo is, but they 3D printed it and screwed it onto the top of their beer tap. So pretty cool. And just, you know, everybody knows that Rick is a great guy to sit down and talk to for hours on end. Yeah, no, absolutely. Rick's a great dude. And uh, we, we we had a great time talking with him, talking bourbon and distilled spirits and the history. Because that, that's the one big thing I always appreciate about Rick, especially was the, the history fact. Him and uh, I think Alan Bishop at French Lick were probably the two that I felt like had the biggest grasp on especially local history for southern indiana and and how distilling has been here for a lot longer than people realize well even with it being you know brandy or 
uh, different types of fruit distilling uh, early on uh, through those German heritages that came through Southern Indiana. So, so on a, a different note, John and I, and I think Scott have talked about doing a barrel pick here as a maker 13, you know, we'll find some really cool engineering riffic, maybe something Rube Goldberg pouring a glass of bourbon kind of sticker and uh, go do a barrel pick here as a fundraiser for the nonprofit that'll help and support education stem outreach and other things that go on so look for that in the near future scott all right well i'm ready you know me my, my taster is always ready to go try some barrels tasters so. and taters tasters yeah. and taters so hey john if, if people want to reach out to you and want to find out a little bit more about maker 13 how can they do that and we'll close this bad boy out sure so our, our website has a lot of information on it and it's just maker 13.com um, you can also send us an email at info at maker13.com, and there's a handful of us that'll look for, are you looking for classes? Are you looking for support? Are you looking for, you know, just, just trying to see what's going on. So, And we are also on uh, all social media platforms at Maker13Indiana. Um, and so that's that's for all Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, but, yeah, we, we don't really care uh, what you make or where you're starting at. We're just excited to see you make something, be creative. And it's amazing how that creativity kind of trickles and, and touches all kinds of industries. And, and uh, so we're just, we're just yeah, excited to have people come down. Good deal. Awesome. Good deal. Thanks for having us, John. Yep. And if you want to reach Bourbon Barrel Talk, you can find us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then also our uh, website is www.bourbonbarreltalk.com. This is Scott, Josh, and John Riley all signing off. Thanks so much.